Hello, and so in this screencast, I want to walk through um, actually performing uh, the free energy calculations with pi and bar. Uh, and so by performing free energy calculations with pi and bar, um, pi and bar is going to use uh, the data that we've uh, generated in Gromax to calculate uh, the solvation free energy. Okay, uh, and so right now I'm in our scratch space. Okay, and I'm going to navigate um, to my folder MIU0105. Um, so MIU0105, and so there's my lidocaine folder I had created. Okay, and let's do calculations with acetone. Okay, so if I open up acetone, I'm then going to open up my FE calculation folder, which is where I performed uh, my solvation free energy. Or, Perform my solvation free energy calculations for um, lidocaine and, and acetone, right? Uh, and so these are the actual Gromax simulations um, in my 15 different states where I collected uh, the data that I need to now do some post processing to actually extract uh, and compute you know, my number, my solvation free energy. Okay, and so to do that, I create a little script called mbarcalc.sh. So normally I would have put it in this directory. Um, but as I mentioned uh, in the video about setting or building pi and bar uh, for your future reference, um, when I was just starting to get the tutorial together, I was really struggling to get pi and bar to work on OSC. Uh, and I'm very relieved and happy that uh, today or this tonight I was I was able to get her working. Okay, and so what I'm going to do okay, is so actually I'm going to go and I'm going to copy. From our lidocaine example directory, I created a new script. I put at the top called mbarcalc.sh. Okay, and so I'm going to copy that. Okay, and for our just for your reference, so I, I showed in the last video, and in, in um, I created this folder that contains the um, analysis programs. Okay, um, but you'll see if you were to go back to day one where I have a directory for Gromax files within lidocaine example, um, that mbarcalc.sh file uh, is now up there, and so you'll be able to download it um, from the website as well. Okay. And so I've copied it now to uh, this directory, so you'll see mbarcalc.sh there. Okay. And if I vim it, just so you can see what it does. Okay. Um, so I've already build, or built um, a pine bar a 2.10 and then this alchemical analysis tool uh, in our path. Okay? And so when I build it, right, um, I can't install um, software uh, while I have limited ability to install software on, on OSC. Uh, and so I just did a, a local build. And so what I need to do now to use this tool um, is I need to add it to my Python path. Okay, and so this export command here just adds pi and bar and alchemical analysis to my Python path. Okay, um, and then I'm just going to execute Python. Okay, um, and then with the alchemical analysis, there's an alchemical analysis Python script um, that actually performs or extracts the data from our Gromax simulations to perform uh, our SID free energy calculation. Okay, and so this is our script that um, will actually perform the calculation or Python script is part of this alchemical analysis package. Uh, so flag P, right? So our files are um, named lidocaine.dhdl. So you have one uh, zero all the way up through um, uh, 14. So dash S500, right? So there's comments up here. Uh, so what this means is we're going to uh, skip over the first 500 picoseconds, or first half nanoseconds. We're going to take it to be equilibration. Uh, and so if you remember when we equilibrated our simulations, um, we equilibrated a single box in which we had a single lidocaine molecule fully interacting our solvent. And then we took that as our starting structure for all of our <clears throat> lambda states. And so we're going to take the first uh, half nanosecond from our five and a half nanosecond trajectory uh, to be essentially equilibration uh, within each state. Uh, the temperature, uh, dash T, we're going to set the temperature to 298.15 Kelvin. Um, so I believe defaults 298, and dash U is units. Uh, so dash U KBT uh, is me asking uh, pi and bar to use dimensionless units to, to calculate 
uh, delta G of solvation over uh, KT, so dimensionless units. Uh, you could just as well use things like kcal and it'll do the solvation free energy calculation in kcal. Now if you wanted something like kcal or kilojoules per mole um, later on and you're using dimensionless units, you just multiply by RT, right, my molar gas constant and temperature, uh, where I use the gas constant in, in my favorite units. Okay, so again I had copied this uh, from lidocaine example.sh, right, so here's the command up here, right, my lidocaine example directory, I have this script in the top. So now that I've copied it here, the command is just period backslash mbar calc.sh, right, I'm going to run uh, mbar calc.sh, okay, and it's giving us some messages, um, so it, it performs uh, some tests to make sure there's no corrupted lines uh, in my files, uh, then it goes in and, and extracts uh, said data, and so one nice thing about um, pi and bar is it does this time series analysis. And so basically it will go through, uh, determine the correlation time uh, of my calculations, and then use that to extract um, independent uh, samples, right? And so uh, for state zero, uh, this will tell me or give me the number of, uh, you know, um, independent samples uh, for said state, right? And we're calculating or performing these fictitious perturbations with the same frequency uh, in each state. And so you'll see, you know, the numbers are different, right? That that correlation time uh, changes um, depending on, on the state. Okay, and then it goes through, uh, and uh, pi and bar actually, by default, does the free energy calculations using a whole host of methods. Uh, so a couple different varieties of thermodynamic integration, uh, two different versions of uh, exponential averaging. So this is essentially uh, yeah, perturbation theory. Then it uses bar, which we've talked about in our workshop, then it's acceptance ratio method. Then it also uses something called uh, mbar. Uh, it's a multi-state Bennett's acceptance ratio method. Uh, and so the bigger difference is when I perform fictitious perturbations, I uh, perform a fictitious perturbation between a current state and all other states. Uh, and then mbar is able to you know, take advantage of this uh, larger uh, set of data, right? And so, you know, bar and mbar are, are both very good, both very good methods to use. Um, if you can do mbar calculations, um, I would go with them. Uh, so in theory, they're uh, better, okay? So it performs uh, free energy calculations. So if I look at my bar and mbar results, uh, they're incredibly similar in this case, right? It gives you the final solvation free energy uh, plus uncertainty. Okay, and so uncertainty, uh, they're you know, using this time series analysis to generate numbers of independent samples, um, and then using that in a determination of uncertainty. And then it also gives you a breakdown, okay? Um, so we turn on um, LJ interactions from state uh, zero to nine, okay? So in each line, right, it's calculating free new difference between state zero and one, one and two, two and three, uh, and so on and so forth, and then it you know, ultimately sums all these up. So if I were to sum up these changes from zero to one up to nine to 10, um, that would correspond to uh, the Leonard Jones contribution, okay? Or, or in this case, I have a label as, as Van der Waals, the Van der Waals contribution to uh, my solvation free energy. Then I turn on electrostatics, right? Uh, so 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 13, 13 to 14. Those are the stages in which I'm turning on electrostatics and that would correspond to my columbic contribution, right? And sometimes it could be useful to uh, look at the relative contribution uh, of the two terms. Okay, so that's printed to screen. You'll see that it also creates this file of results.txt. Okay, so if I were to vim results.txt, right, shows the results. Okay, great. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's it. Okay, one nice thing about you know, this output print to screen is that it shows um, the actual correlation times. All right, if you wanted to save that information, say to disk, all right, all you would have to do is in my Python command, I could redirect the output so that instead of printing to screen, you print to file. So I could do like mbar results.txt, and then that output that's being displayed to screen right now, uh, it would send to that text file. Okay. But uh, that's all there is to performing or extracting solvation-free energies now from our simulations. 
And so you could go ahead and copy that file uh, to all your other Lidocaine directories and, and run. Okay. All that you would need to update, say, in the future is, you know, you're going to have the same software installed. So this would be the same, right? It'd be wherever you build uh, pi and bar and alchemical analysis. Right? It'd be Python. You'd point to the same Python uh, script file. But then what would change is, you know, depending on the solute or how you name your files, right, the name, um, depending on how you set up the calculations, right? So I have it set up so I run a five and a half nanosecond sec five and a half nanosecond simulation, and I want to throw out the first uh, half nanosecond is equilibration, right? This is how much I discard. Um, uh, your, if your temperature is different, you would change the temperature, and if you want different units, you would change the units, okay? But that's it, okay? And so with that, uh, we'll stop this route.